What is going on everybody, Estas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. And we're also going to be talking about one trade that I made today on the 3rd of January in 2019. But before we do talk about this, for all you new viewers out there, my name is Stas, and I make videos dealing with swing trading, day trading, long-term investing, and my personal philosophies and strategies when it comes down to investing and trading in the stock market. So for those of you guys who want to learn more about that, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe, and follow me on Instagram and Twitter, as well as our Facebook group chat, as well as our Discord group chat. All of those are linked down below in the description box. So what happened today, guys? On the 3rd of January in 2019, well, we had an expected red day. And why am I saying expected, guys? Well, because in yesterday's video, we talked about how Apple reported that their sales are weakening over in China and they dropped their revenue guidance to down to about $84 billion which is lower than actually what they reported last year during this time period, right? So this is a very, very bad news for Apple. And I said in yesterday's video how this was most likely going to drag down the entire stock market today. And that's exactly what ended up happening. So we see here the Dow Jones closed the day down about almost 3%, down about 660 points. The S&P 500 closed the day down about 62 points, down about 2.48%. And excuse me, the NASDAQ, um, uh, these are the NASDAQ futures. So that's why it's, it's showing that it's up $4 right now. But if we want to see the drop in the NASDAQ today, um, you know, pretty much we opened up the day here at around 6,300 and we ended up closing off the day right around 6,160. So we lost about 150 points in the overall NASDAQ throughout the entire trading day today. So, you know, we kind of expected this to happen today, especially since we saw Apple tank about 8% once this news came out yesterday after market hours. And we can see this, you know, directly on Apple's chart. And, you know, for those beginners out there, you know, Apple has a very big weight on all of the indexes, guys, you know, the entire, you know, U.S. economy and sometimes, you know, the global economy as well. So, you know, this massive drop here. Here, the revenue cut, the weakening in China's sales, and you know, the whole trade war going on right now. You know, this definitely pushed down the market today 100%. So, let's take a look at some charts here to, to get into a little bit deeper depth on what's going on in terms of the Dow Jones. So, as of right now, guys, it seems like we did get rejected by the 50 simple moving average here on the 180 day four hour chart. And this is something that we've been waiting for, guys, over the past couple of days. And like I've been telling you guys, you know, just because we've had a couple of green days in a row, like we did these past couple of days, it does not mean anything, right? And what did ha what happened, guys? You know exactly what I thought was going to happen, which was we topped off here. We had some resistance here at around 23,300. We got rejected by that 50 SMA, and now we're heading down to potentially make another lower low. So what supports do we have to keep an eye on right now for the Dow Jones? Well, we have to look at this three-year chart to determine that. So the fact that we got, you know, rejected here at this resistance, which was a previous support from back in March 2018, um, you know, the next support we're going to be seeing here is at around 22,300, which is about 300, 400 points lower than where we're currently at right now. And if we do break that support, guys, the next one we're heading to is the one that we bounced, um, you know, bounced on back in December at around 21,000. $650. So if we're just judging off the 180 chart here, guys, we can clearly see the Dow is making lower highs and it's in the process right now of, you know, making that lower low. Am I saying it's going to 100% make that lower low? Nope, I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying 
And just judging what this chart is telling me right now based off these technicals that, you know, we are strongly pushing down now. And, you know, the next stop is this support here. And then after that, we're going to be testing that low at around 21,700. And if we do break that, guys, we're going to be getting deeper into uh, back into bear market territory. Because as of right now, I don't think we're in a bear market quite yet because we're down about 15, 16 percent. And this is solely due to that. That upswing that we had these past couple of days that got us, you know, back into that 15% drop territory. But when we were down here, we were down about almost 20%. So the fact that, you know, if we do break this lower low, we're going to be getting deeper into, you know, that 20, 25% drop territory. That's not really a good sign for the overall um, Dow Jones based off a technical basis. So let's take a look at what happened today on the S&P 500 guys. Very similar to the Dow Jones. We had a couple of green days in a row. I was telling you guys, you know, don't let this fool you. The fact that this trend is telling us that it's still downtrending is what you should be focusing on. Don't be focusing on these three, four green days as, you know, a reversal in the market because I did get a bunch of questions about that, guys. You know, a bunch of people were asking me, you know, just because we've had a couple of green days, is this going to reverse the market? The answer to that is no because the overall trend is still pointing down and we've had similar situations over the past couple of weeks since the sell-off in early October. And by different situations, I mean we've had situations where we've had a couple green days in a row followed by even more selling. And that's what I thought this situation here was going to be. And it seems like as of right now, you know, I was right. So we got rejected here by the 50 SMA on the 180 chart. And if we're taking a look at some older supports, guys, to see where we could be potentially headed next for the S&P 500, well, I want you to keep an eye, and I'm going to be keeping an eye on this trend here on this three-year, one-week chart and the support on the 180 SMA on this chart as well because this has been a support over the past couple of years. And if we're judging on this longer-term chart, here, the 20 year chart. I've talked about this in a couple of videos as well. You know, this trend here is very valid, stemming back to the recession in 2008, and it's proven to be a strong support. So keep an eye here, guys. We are right at the support of this trend. So if we do break this level, we're going to be headed back to around the 23, mid 2300 range. And then after that, you know, if the selling does continue to ramp up, if the economy um, you know, the growth continues to slow in the economy, you know, with companies earnings and such, we're going to be headed back down to the 2200 range. And at that point, we're going to be well into a bear market, um, you know, for the S&P 500. So overall, guys, on the 180 chart, we're making lower lows. We're in the process right now of making another lower low. This is officially a new lower high. The previous high was at around 2700. Or actually, no, it was at around 2,500. This high here is at about 2,500. Or this one was actually at around 2,575. This one's at around 2,500 flat. So the pattern is still valid. We're downtrending still in the S&P 500 and in the Dow Jones. And if we're taking a look at the NASDAQ, which is now turning red in terms of this future, we got rejected by the 50 SMA. And we got we're not we didn't uh, you know successfully break above the 180 SMA. May, meaning that we are still technically downtrending. This is a lower high from the previous high at around 65.70. This high was at around 63.50. So the trend is still in place. So what supports are we looking at for the NASDAQ? And we're looking at one right here at, a, at around 61.75. This one's stemming back from a couple years ago, I believe, or around, uh, actually, no, this one was from back in the sell-off from February in March of 2018. Well, actually more in February. We bottomed off here at around 61.75, 61.60, and that's exactly where we are right now with the next level being at around $6,000 flat, which is a support from back in three three years ago, not two, three years ago, like one and a half, two years ago, back in uh, October of 2017, about one and a half, one year and about three months ago. This was the support at around six excuse me, $6,000. So keep an eye there. And, you know, overall, guys, all the markets right now, 
are downtrending, making lower lows, making lower highs. And right now, we're just not seeing any signs of a reversal in sight. And this is expected because, again, Apple reported what they reported yesterday. You know, the economy has been, you know, slowing in growth, the trade war, all the insecurities, and, you know, all the uncertainty, rather. And this is just stemming, you know, to the market, you know, going down in price because the market does not like uncertainty. And it all kind of makes is all kinds of makes sense you know the way things are playing out in the current state of the market in my personal opinion so let's talk about what i traded today and i'm sure you guys can guess because the markets were heavily red I traded TVIX, which is an ETF that tracks mainly the S&P 500, and it goes up in price when the overall markets are selling off. So let's see what happened here in TVIX, and we can break down why I entered this position. Very similar setup to yesterday's trade and the trade from Monday. So pay attention to this, guys. Very valuable information that I'm about to tell you guys right now, and let's see why I ended up trading TVIX. IX. So in terms of why I'm saying it's a very similar setup to yesterday's trade, which was in DWT, is because this was another gap down trade, right? We saw a resistance pre-market hours and we sold off heading into the market open, opening up that margin of profit and opening up that gap, right? And whenever we see stocks in ETFs do this sort of pattern, you know, from pre-market hours heading into the market open, this is something worth watching to see whether or not that stock or ETF is going to be able to fill that gap, fill that margin that was opened up pre-market hours. So this is exactly what I was waiting for, right? We opened up that margin of around, let's see what it was, around 6% from the peak here at 73.50 at around, what time was this? 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It dropped all the way down to about $69, again, opening up that 5 6% margin. And at this point, guys, what I was waiting for is to see if we were going to bottom out once the market opened and start to slowly uptrend in price to fit that gap and that's what I was planning on you know that's when I was planning on trading TVIX and if you guys are part of the discord group chat the free discord group chat I was talking about this or I talked about my trade in TVIX in that group chat and let's see exactly my logic behind this so the, the margin opened up we slowly started to fill that gap and I initially got in I believe at around $70.58 once we made that higher low here at around $70 we bounced on the 50 SMA and what I mean by higher low is that you know we noticed from the open on the market this one one started uptrending in price making higher highs right and higher lows and the fact that we were doing that was showing me that the market is slowly downtrending in price which is pushing up TVIX to the upwards direction, right? Very similar, or not similar, very simple, you know, understanding here of what is going on, right? The, the S&P selling off in the morning, right? That's pushing up TVIX, making higher highs, higher lows. And the fact that we jumped or bounced on this 50 SMA right here, that gave me incentive to pretty much trade TVIX. And if we just see S&P very quickly, what was going on, you know, we gapped down here and started selling off aggressively. And, you know, what I do every morning, guys, is I watch the S&P, the Dow, and the NASDAQ because I like to see the direction of where these indexes are moving before deciding on what I'm going to trade. And, you know, for example, let's take a look here for today's trade. We opened up, we started selling very aggressively, making lower lows, very, very aggressively. And that just showed me that, you know, the S&P was opening up red and a lot of selling was going on because of the panic with Apple. So I capitalized on this with trading TVIX. So I didn't get all the margin here. I didn't get the entire gap fill, but I did end up selling off at this resistance from yesterday. And this is what I was talking about in yesterday's, uh, you know, not yesterday's, today in the group chat on Discord. I was talking about how I, you know, sold off at yesterday's resistance levels. So we got in at 70.58 and we pretty much sold off here because at this point, guys, just think about 
this point in time for me, right? I was already in at a good price point right here. We were aggressively shooting up. The RSI was very overbought at that point, right? And we pretty much almost filled the entire gap of pre-market, but we were already at the gap from yesterday. We filled the gap from yesterday's resistance. So I just wanted to play it safe at this point, and I took my profits. I believe it was at around $72.50. So from $70.58 up to where I took my profits, I made about 2.75% on this trade and very slightly shy of my daily goal of three to five percent but again profit is profit I'm very happy with any profit I'm able to take from the stock market and you know that is how I treat it right I, I get I get you know once I get my profit for the day most of the time you know I'm done trading for the day because I like staying green I like staying consistent I don't really have any FOMO trades fear of missing out trades because you know I'm kind of over that that's more in my opinion something that you have to you know handle when you're getting into the stock market a lot of people start you know trading in the beginning they have FOMO they end up you know buying a stock that's too overpriced for the day maybe it's oversold it's already made its run then they end up losing money right so this is something that I've been able to conquer my emotions I've been able to conquer my emotions in this aspect of FOMO and you know when I take my profits for the day guys of about 2%, 1%, 0.5%, 5%, 5 whatever it may be for that day. I'm typically just done trading for the day unless I see any other ridiculous opportunities out there. And I'm just watching the charts, you know, periodically throughout the day after I'm done trading. Drop a comment down below. Let me know if you guys do something similar to this. I would love to love to know. So that is what I did today, guys. Very simple, 2.75%. Another stock that did very well today today that we've been talking about and covering was Cron, ticker symbol C-R-O-M. This is a marijuana company, and we talked about this one from the bottoming out point here at the top of this trend line, and at this point, guys, Cron was at a higher low, and this is what really opened my eyes up to Cron in the first place. I didn't end up trading this one, but I know a bunch of people out there in the group and other people that have been DMing me have been trading Cron. So shout out to you if you did trade Cron, guys. We actually covered this one in my video yesterday, and I was kind of um. Let's take a look. What what time period was I looking at it yesterday? We were slowly starting to see a cup and handle for. I believe right here, right? We saw this cup, right? And then this handle formation, it literally played out perfectly, right? The cup, the handle, and then we broke that resistance that I was talking about in yesterday's video at around $11.50. We ran up all the way to $12.16, and now we're holding the top of the resistance now being a new support. So the fact that Cron is holding this one after market hours as well gives me reason to think that this one could potentially run up back to $13, $14. I'm going to be watching it super closely at these levels for a trade, guys. But let's say we break below here, we break that trend that we're currently seeing, you know, that's going to be a break of trend and I'm no longer going to be interested in trading Cron. But let's say tomorrow we slowly start to up push back into the $12 range. That's going to be a very, very good sign in terms of Cron. So just wanted to quickly talk about Cron today. You know, very solid setup right now, in my personal opinion, in terms of Cron. Another one that's interesting is Enbev, right? We got rejected by the 180 SMA, but we are holding that 50 SMA. So let's see tomorrow, guys, if we are able to potentially get a trade in Enbev from this gap that we see that it opened up from about, you know, the 180 SMA resistance down to this level. That is a, around a 5, 6, 7% margin of profit. So I am going to be watching that one very closely. We saw gold futures today absolutely tear it up. We're almost at that $1,300 level. That is a resistance from the past. And we can see that very clearly right here, guys. This is a very solid resistance. We sold off. We bottomed out. We're heading back up. We're uptrending in price right now. And we're getting close to that $1,300 level that we can see on the three-year chart, guys, is a solid resistance. So 
I'm watching JDST right now to see whether or not we're going to get rejected here and start to pull back a little bit in the gold futures, which would open up that opportunity in the gold, uh, in uh, the bear ETF, which is JDST. But let's say we break out of this resistance, guys. I think gold could run back up to the mid 1350s, opening up JNUG for even more profit potential, guys. We see JNUG today absolutely tore it up as well up 10 percent guys so if you were able to trade jnug drop a comment down below let me know but you know other than that guys you know that's pretty much what happened today in the markets right very solid red day i still think there's more red to come based on what these technicals on their major markets are telling us excuse me keep an eye on gold guys gold is very very um in a very interesting spot right now again if we break that 1300 resistance it could continue to run to the mid 1300s if we get rejected it may be time for a pullback which would make jdst a very solid play but it's all about playing it by ear guys and if we take a look at some major um you know stocks here large cap stocks like apple it was down 10 percent i know a lot of people have some call options in our group which is not too bad of an idea in my personal opinion because over these past couple of weeks guys since this big sell-off we've noticed every time that apple made a lower low it's been able to bounce back up so the fact that people have call options on apple right now makes sense from a 180 day technical perspective right if we're able to bottom out in the 140s you know 142 range which we are seeming like we're doing right now you know, we could push back up into the low 150s, which I'm sure that's why a lot of people, you know, that's where a lot of people have their uh, strike price for Apple, right? So that is something worth looking at if you're into options, guys, right? Again, this is not financial, um, you know, this is not financial advice, right? This is all for entertainment purposes, in my personal opinion. So don't just go make a call option right now, you know, just because I said that, right? You have to do your own research. But, you know, it makes sense for my personal opinion to why people people are, you know, making call options right now, you know, placing call options in Apple. It makes sense from a technical perspective. So Facebook guys, you know, it's getting rejected by the 180 SMA here. Keep an eye on that resistance point. You know, Amazon, you know, very same, you know, level here under the 180 SMA. Let's take a look at Netflix guys. Pretty much all of these are at resistance points at their 180 day simple moving averages, right? We can see that on Google as well and i'm pretty sure microsoft too right actually no microsoft got rejected by the 50 simple moving average so let me know guys what are you guys doing today in terms of stocks trading i personally actually bought three shares of apple today i post posted that on my story on instagram at around 143 dollars for my long-term portfolio have you guys been buying shares please let me know down below in the comment section i'll catch you guys in the next video thank Thank you so much for watching. If you found value in this video, drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe, follow me on the other show, social platforms. And if you guys want to be in contact with me and our group throughout the trading day, feel free to join that Discord. We have about 400 people in there right now. And the Facebook group as well, we have about 115 people in that. All of those are down below in the description box. Again, thanks for all the love, all the support. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.